Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Jess. Welcome to my greenhouse here at Roots and Refuge Farm. Today we are going to do something really fun. I'm move the dinosaur out of the way. We're going to open up a bunch of seeds, which is one of my favorite things to do. But today we're specifically talking about buying like survival seeds, victory garden seeds, buying seeds for emergency. Um, this year, 2020, was definitely an interesting one and the gardening world saw some action that it hadn't seen in a long time uh, because of the fact that many people saw grocery store shelves empty for the first time in their, li the first time in their lives. Uh, they had a lot of spare time on their hands. A lot of people started gardening this year that haven't in the past. And because of that, um, a lot of the seed companies where you know, seasoned gardeners would typically go buy their seeds. They sold out of a lot of stuff. It's supply issues have been a big deal this year. I am always looking for information that I can give to you guys to help you when it comes to gardening, either sourcing the things that you need, making decisions and having success in growing your gardens. And I had this idea to kind of do a review of some of these seed packages that are specifically aimed to people who are trying to buy survival garden seeds, victory garden seeds. Now I purchased all of these um, for the sake of doing this video. None of these companies are sponsoring me. I actually don't know any of these companies. So I purchased these from a viewpoint 100% as a consumer like you doing the research. The only thing is, is that I have grown a garden for years now at shopping from the standpoint of a consumer that doesn't know anything about gardening, which a lot of cases where people are buying survival seeds or people are thinking, okay, I know I need seeds because seeds equal food, but they might not be gardeners. And I think that a lot of the marketing and the things that you may run into when doing this kind of seed shopping, um, they might be banking on that a little bit, that maybe some of the people buying this stuff are not seasoned gardeners, so I, we'll get to that. First, let's talk very briefly about what you need to look for if you are trying to put up an emergency seed storage collection. First off, the seeds that you buy from anywhere are going to be labeled packaged for and then the year that they're packaged for. So like right now at the end of 2020 as you shop from seed companies or if you go to like big box stores and buy the seeds as they come in there, they're gonna say packaged to be sold in 2021. That is not an expiration date. These are not dairy products. They're not going to spoil whenever that date goes by. I have many seeds which I've stored over the years that I've saved from my gardens that I've bought from seed companies that I've traded with other gardeners and every year I plant seeds that are five to seven years old and they grow. I do try with my seed collection to use the older stuff first because the germination can decrease over time. However, I know that Luke um, in my gardener, he did an experiment where he was given some seeds in a shadow box. I think they were 82 or 87 years old. And he was actually able to grow these tomatoes from these 80 something year old seeds. So that goes to show you, don't throw out seeds just because they've passed the sale by date. Um, that's just something that's put into place to make sure or that uh, people are not sold older seeds because they can have lesser germination rates, but uh, it definitely doesn't mean that you as the gardener should throw away those seeds. In order to store any seeds, either these packages that we're talking about, or if you were just to buy your, your seeds from another seed company, uh, the, the key to get them to last the longest is an airtight container. So you'll see a lot of people using like um, screw on lid, a bucket, something that's mouse proof, rodent proof. Um, sometimes people use plastic containers that have like a lock on lid to store their seeds in. And an airtight container really does help with like the longevity. It's gonna make sure your seeds don't get wet if something accidentally gets spilled near them. Uh, it's not a must, but it does absolutely help keep those safer. Another thing is keeping them in a dry and cool place. Uh, people ask me sometimes, do you have to keep your seeds in the freezer? You don't have 
have to, you can. That's definitely going to help them last longer if you keep them like in a deep freezer, if you keep them in the back of your freezer, but you don't have to. With something like one of these bags, that might not be that big of a deal, but if you have a really large seed collection, storing it in the freezer just might not be feasible. I personally keep them in my basement. Uh, we keep the humidifier running down there anyway, so it keeps it nice and dry and it stays cooler down there. They're not in any sort of direct light. For example, you wouldn't want to store your seeds like in a greenhouse or something because that heat and light is going to break them down over time. Again, if you were to like leave some seeds in the greenhouse, even for a couple months, they would probably be fine. They would probably still grow. Don't ever throw away seeds because you think, oh darn, I messed up and didn't store them right. Now they're no good. Try to grow them before you deem them unusable. Um, because if you throw them in the trash, you'll definitely get nothing from them. But if you try to grow them, you might get something. So there are a couple terms that are really important when you're shopping for seeds for a survival situation. Now, everywhere, I think probably on these, let's see, a non-GMO, non-GMO, most times when people are, yeah, non-GMO, most times when people are trying to sell seeds to someone who's shopping for a survival situation or an emergency situation, they're going to plaster non-GMO all over the labeling. You should know that it is illegal to sell GMO seeds to a home gardener in the United States and as far as I know in most places I don't know of anywhere where it's legal GMO seeds are sold to commercial farmers um, and you're not gonna go into the dollar store or a big box store or order anywhere that's selling gardening seeds online and accidentally buy GMO uh, however, you might end up buying a hybrid. Now, there are two terms that are going to come up in buying seeds that matter where this is concerned. Uh, the non-GMO thing, I feel like that's just marketing to try to appeal to people because they've heard GMOs are bad over and over. And so they think, I got to get the non-GMO seeds if I want to have a survival garden. There are hybrids, and you're going to see that language on seeds. And what that is, is that's just a cross between two plants. Now, I want you to consider if you take a German Shepherd dog and you breed it to a Labrador and they have puppies and let's say there's 10 puppies in that litter you're gonna have some that might look more like a German Shepherd and some that might might look more like a Labrador and then if those puppies go on to have puppies you're gonna get like a total mixed bag of genetics because that breed is just unstable it's just a mix and so you've got all these dominant recessive genes and different factors that go into it the reason why people say hybrids are not sustainable is not that they will not grow food. So hear me out. If you are in a situation where you need to grow food in case of emergency, grow the seeds you can get your hands on. If you don't have, you know, seeds that are labeled open pollinated or non-GMO or non-hybrid or heirloom or whatever, um, if all you have is some tomato seeds that you scraped out of a tomato from the grocery store, you will, in most cases, when you grow these things, still get edible fruit. It's just gonna look different than the fruit that you took it out of if it's cross-pollinated or if it's a non-stabilized hybrid. So people actually operate under a misperception a lot of times thinking, oh, I can't grow hybrid seeds. I can't save seeds from a hybrid. It's non-sustainable. It, it is in the case of it's an emergency and you need to put food on the table. It's just not sustainable as in you're going to reproduce the same plant that you save the seeds from. And I know that's kind of confusing for a new gardener. So the term that you want to look for, if you want to make sure that that plant is going to breed true because it's stabilized it's not a mixed bag of genetics it's a stabilized plant is you need to look for the term open pollinated and open pollinated just means that that variety is stable you can save seeds from that and they're going to be just like the parent plant sometimes um, open pollinated varieties are just recent hybrids that were created and stabilized it only takes growing something like eight to ten generations to get a stabilized seed an open pollinated seed um, heirlooms are all open pollinated because heirlooms are varieties that have been around for 50 plus years they've been handed down from one generation to the next so those are all open pollinated you can save the seeds and they'll be like the parents in most cases unless they're planted right next to something else and that is why people think oh hybrids are bad heirlooms are what you want for sustainability and for survival garden and again I can't stress it enough if you are in an actual emergency situation grow the seeds that you can get your hands on so that's important because 
whenever you go to search survival seeds, victory garden seeds, emergency seeds uh, collection, anything like that, you are going to get all this non-GMO, non-hybrid, heirloom, open pollinated, and you might be like, what is that? How important is it? Now you know. And I don't want to harp on this too much because I really want to get into opening these seeds, but I know somebody will say something. Uh, some people will say, well, you can't save seeds from stuff in the store because it's sterile or it won't grow. And while there are cases of GMO crops that are grown near other crops causing cross-pollination that causes plants to be sterile, and there are cases of things not growing well, in many, many, many cases, you can grow seeds. You can buy a bag of beans at the store, dried beans, and you can grow them. You can buy heads of garlic. You can buy potatoes and let them sprout. There are lots of cases you can scrape the seeds out of a pepper from the store. You can do that in many, many cases and get food. Things being sterile is not the norm. And I think that's actually a dangerous misperception that we have all believed. And I think it's one of the reasons why gardening feels so uh, hard to a lot of people because you think, well, you gotta leave it to the professionals, it's so hard. In most cases, seeds want to grow. I just did a search. I tried to shop for this from the perspective of a person who would just be looking for something like this, feeling like, okay, I need some sort of food security. I wanna have a collection of seeds to put back just in case. And so I just typed in survival garden seed collection, emergency seed collection, and food security seed collection. And I just put it in like an internet search. I bought two of these on Amazon. I bought two of these from separate companies. I came across many other collections like this that came in buckets and cans. Um, I did not buy anything that was over $40 because I wanted to kind of report this from an entry level standpoint. I did see a lot of massive seed collections that were in the $100 to $200 range, but I just didn't want to spend that much money on them. And I did find that a lot of these from different companies and different sources were sold out. Um, and that's not surprising to me just because seed sourcing has been difficult this year, I'm sure that these places have had an incredible demand this year, as well as all the other seed companies. So you don't have to buy seeds like this in a collection for this purpose. Most of them do come in some sort of package that is geared towards um, helping the longevity of the shelf life. But if you wanted to just put together a little collection of seeds to have for your own storage, you could do that. You could seal them in like a Mylar bag. You could put them in a couple of Ziploc bags and put them in your freezer. And you could buy those from any seed company that you purchase seeds from or from the store or save them from your own garden if you're already gardening. Another thing to consider is if you are gardening right now and you just want to get into growing a basic garden without doing a ton of seed shopping or maybe at a lower price point, you could consider these. You can just open them and grow them. There's no reason why you couldn't grow them now. So the first one here, uh, this is a, a collection. I found this on Amazon. It's called Open Seed Vault. And this is a company that does say made in the U.S. Now I'm opening these, which if I were trying to buy these to store long term, I would leave these sealed in this package. Now this is called Survival Garden Heirloom Seeds. I think this was around $40. This is the smallest size pack of, of the four that I am reviewing today. Um, but it says 32 varieties. Of course, it's saying heirloom, non-GMO, 100% non-hybrid, um, open pollinated, moisture proof bag. And it has a list on the front of what is inside here, but we're just gonna open this up and take a look. All right. I do appreciate this collection, even though there's not just a whole lot of seeds of each variety, that they are in these little bags. You can see here they have a sugar daddy pea, so it's got the variety on the bag. And it is kind of nice that they're in these bags because if I did want to store this in my freezer, it wouldn't take up very much space. If I wanted to travel with this, if I wanted to send it to somebody, it wouldn't take up a lot of space. Also, this has a little step-by-step -step growing guide inside. Um, and it looks like we've got like a paragraph for each variety that is included, which isn't a lot of information, but it's definitely better than none. I remember being with a family member of mine about 10 years ago, and uh, they were talking about their emergency seed collection. I was like, do you, do you garden? And they were like, well, I'll just throw the seeds in the ground. They'll probably grow. And I was like, hmm, well, 
I definitely think if you don't have gardening experience and you're like trying to prepare for an emergency, maybe getting some literature on gardening and keeping it with your seeds would probably be a good idea. So let's take a look at what we've got in this collection. We've got some California Wonder Bell Peppers. Say that's probably about 25 seeds. So that's a pretty good amount. The thing is with buying a collection like this, it's got all of these varieties. You could grow a garden just regularly for like probably a few years off of this. Cantaloupe, Hale's Best, Golden Acre Cabbage, Giant Ford Hook Swiss Chard, Mammoth Sunflower, Black Beauty Zucchini, Detroit Dark Red Beet, Shogoin Turnip, Ace 55 Tomato, uh, Blue Scotch Curled Kale, Long Island Improved Brussels Sprouts, Market More Cucumber, Snowball Cauliflower, Ruby Leaf Lettuce, Evergreen Bunching Onion, Tender Green Improved Bean, Bloomsdale Spinach, Scarlet Carrots, Tall Utah Improved Celery, Waltham Broccoli, Butter Crunch Butterhead Lettuce, Black Seeded Simpson Lettuce, Sugar Daddy Peas, uh, All American Parsnips, Waltham Butternut Winter Squash, Clemson Spineless Okra, Pumpkin Sugar Pie Pumpkin, um, Henderson Lima Beans, Black Beauty Eggplant, Cherry Bell Radish, Golden Bantam Corn, and Sugar Baby Watermelon. So I would say this is a really balanced collection. As I read through these, I just separated it out. These are things that are going to grow in cooler weather and are going to survive a frost. These are things that are going to require warmer weather. So I kind of like seeing that you're already equipped to be able to grow food during, you know, multiple times a year. The only thing that I think is probably a little bit out of balance about this collection is you've got a whole lot of lettuce seeds here, which on one hand, lettuce does grow fast. However, I would say probably the reason why you're seeing this much lettuce, this is a lot of lettuce seeds. You could, you, you could probably sow a garden um, if you actually grew these for heads and planted these 10 inches apart. I could sow my entire garden with these three packages and I have a very large garden. Uh, also, I've got this massive pack of celery seeds. This is enough celery to last my family like a probably a solid five years at least growing this tiny pack every year. There's a bunch of seeds in here. My assumption of why that's the case, why we've got this many of these seeds is because th this company wanted to put 15,000 seeds on the front of this and that's a lot easier to do when you're filling up little baggies of these. And truly to me in a survival situation, having this, you know, like if this is all the seeds you're gonna have, um, I would rather definitely see some beans and stuff like that. Personally, in my own survival situation, I would rather have really a substantial amount of roots, uh, fast growing roots. I would want more radish seeds than this. I would definitely want more beets, the green leafy things that are maybe more substantial and fast growing like kale and chard, I would want more of that. Overall, this isn't awful. I appreciate the small package. I appreciate how much is packed into this little space, but I do think probably this is fudged a little bit with all of those tiny seeds. And for the $40 that this cost, I would say that's okay, but it's, I mean, I'm not like wowed by it. And I haven't opened these other ones yet, but just from the outside looking at them, I think that there are probably better deals to be had than this. The only super positive thing I can say for this is the packaging, the small space. This is a pretty substantial seed collection in such a small space. All right, let's take a look at the other one from Amazon. I looked through a lot of the ones that were available on Amazon and read their reviews. And the reason I picked these two over some of the other similarly priced collections that had similar offering was that the reviews in some cases said that the germination was really bad. And these both had decent reviews saying that they had good germination. Another thing that I looked for, and these again were seeds that said, you know, that they were sourced in the United States. This one is the same. 
Uh, it also, it says 42 varieties, so there are 10 more varieties in this. It says 15,000 seeds as well. Non-GMO, open pollinated, non-hybrid, of course, I expect to see that on these. Uh, clay, clay gardens, vegetables is what this one is. See, and it has a list of the seed types as well. Now, this looks like a brown paper bag, but on the inside, it is mylar, so it's the same setup for long-term storage. All right, let's take a look at what's in here. Here's a little thank you note. So we're not getting any instructions in this one. I guess this is like their social media and a list of the varieties. And this also shows how many of each seed you have here. I do note that this has this little silica pack in it. I did notice that there was not anything like that in this other one. So that's kind of cool. So that's gonna help again with the storage shelf life of these seeds. On the back of this, it states that it's dated September 20th, 2020. Uh, store in a cool, dry place up to 25 years from this packing date. I really actually love that they say that on there. So if you keep this sealed, they do have that oxygen absorber in there and you can expect up to 25 years of germination out of these seeds. And I think that's really cool and it is accurate. Of course, you could achieve the same thing by packaging seeds that you bought separately. But I can see that they have gone through a lot of measures to make these a long lasting collection. Also, um, all of these seeds are packed in sealed packages. So they're sealed on all sides. So they're not little zipper bags. Again, that's going to help lend to these being stored for a long time. So let's take a look at what we've got in here. Red acre cabbage. Market more cucumber, straight neck squash, Henderson lima beans, so a lot of the same varieties as the last one. Red burgundy onion, garlic nance carrots, Mary Washington asparagus. I find that an incredibly um, interesting option for a survival garden kit. This is not fast food. If you want to plant asparagus from seeds, you can harvest them four years later. So that's kind of funny that that's in there, but I mean, it's not bad that it's in there. Uh, jalapeno pepper, beefsteak tomato, Clemson spineless okra, dark green zucchini, butternut squash, California wonder bell pepper. This is, does this, this is not labeled. That, oh, okay, this is cool. So this is a little envelope and it actually has little bags with the zippers. So if you open these, you can reseal them. Cool, appreciate that that little attention to detail. So that is that is really neat because if you open these, otherwise they're just gonna be everywhere. So you've got bags here to put them in. Nice. Black seeded Simpson lettuce, Detroit dark red beets, tall Utah celery, uh, green bunching, bunching scallions, yellow Utah sweet onions, blue curled scotch kale, Black Beauty Eggplant, Sugar Pie Pumpkins, Ruby Leaf Lettuce, a lot of the same varieties as the last one, Danvers Carrots, Large Cherry Cherry Tomato, Iceberg Lettuce, Mammoth Sunflower, Sugar Baby Watermelon, Bloomsdale Spinach, Sugar Snap Snap Peas, Purple Top Turnips, Green Arrow Peas, Snowball Y Cauliflower, Long Island's Brussels Sprouts, Waltham 29 Broccoli, Golden Acre Cabbage, Golden Bantam Corn, Shell Pinto Beans, Provider Green Beans, Cherry Bell Radish, Swiss Chard, Ford Hook, Tender Green Bush Beans, Hale's Best Cantaloupe, and Provider Green Beans. So I'm definitely seeing that this is a more diverse, this has 10 more varieties than the other collection. Uh, it was the same price as the other collection, so I would say this would be the better option. I like that I'm seeing more green beans here. Um, I like that I like that it has a regular tomato as well as a cherry tomato. You know, we have an extra type of carrot here. We have turn we have the turnips. I appreciate the effort that has gone in here to um, making sure that the shelf life on these is as long as possible, having that oxygen absorber and the way each of these is sealed. And then adding in the little plastic bags 
does make this usable if you decide to open these and grow some of them and try to save the rest. And this, this bag, as well as the first one, these are both resealable. So um, it's not gonna be as sealed as if you kept them closed, but you're still going to be able to grow these over the course of a few years, I would say. Now this is a collection that I bought this from a really popular brand for like survivalist type stuff. My mom buys us um, gifts from these people regularly and gets us like solar flashlights and solar phone chargers and stuff like that, which are cool. Uh, but I, I went to here because I knew this was the kind of place that people bought stuff like this from. It's called Four Patriots. Um, and this collection came, this was $29. And it says Victory Garden Seed Collection. They offer larger collections, but none of them were in stock at the time of me shopping. And this is $29. So it said the ultimate in self-reliance, these beloved vegetable garden seeds have seen generations through the toughest of times, non-GMO open pollinated, no green thumb required. Um, again, in Mylar packaging. Now actually, Yes, I didn't read it super thoroughly when I was shopping, but I didn't realize how few seeds were in this collection. So this was 30 bucks. It has eight packages. However, they are full size packages rather than those small packages. So that's kind of embarrassing. I seriously cannot open this. I just ripped it underneath the little thing that is meant to reseal it. Wow. That booger was stuck. Oh well. Good thing I know how to garden <laughs> because I can't even open the package. All right, so let's take a look at what we have in here. Again, we've got a lot of language that's like very survivalish marketing towards that. Survival seeds for patriots, um, more valuable than gold, definitely. So the back of these uh, have some information, direct sow these seeds outside. Okay, so that's just like a, an information on how to grow this. This is Paris Island lettuce. I would say there's probably not a whole lot more in this pack than what's in those other little packs. It's just, these are each resillable. Um, so it's kind of interesting. We've got green sprouting broccoli, Detroit dark red beets. Now that's a pretty full pack right there. And the sprouting broccoli, that's probably, that's a good bit of sprouting broccoli. So we're, we're definitely got bigger packs here. California Wonder Peppers. Um, all right, I'm curious how many seeds are in these. Yeah, I mean, it's not a ton. Not a whole lot more than what was in those other ones. It's just a bigger package. I do like that these packages are Mylar and that they're sealed, but um, whenever you break down the cost individually, these packages, this is not the best deal of the ones that we're looking at. So here are Scarlet Nance, Nance Carrots, Beefsteak Tomatoes, um, Snowball Cauliflower, and Golden Bantam Corn. I will say this package is big and full. And I think that's good. Corn is good um, as far as being able to grow food. I, I'm not wildly impressed with this one. I just think for the cost, I don't see that this is really, as far as a survival seed kit goes, for the cost, I would just expect to get a little bit more than this. I would have liked to see a little bit more variety. So this is okay, but if I were going to be putting up survival seeds, I would want more than just this. To me, if you're gonna have survival seeds, if you're gonna have, okay, these are the seeds I'm going to try to feed my family off of, I definitely would wanna see some more variety. Um, I would wanna see some beans. Some of the things that are like a little bit easier, like for instance, cauliflower and broccoli are not the easiest things to grow. Cauliflower, broccoli, corn, um, those are all pretty space intensive for the amount of yield that you get. Uh, carrots, definitely not a super easy thing to grow. And so I definitely would want to see some more basic root vegetables, beans um, in, for a survival situation, and then a lot more leafy greens than just one pack of kale. So um, not crazy about that. So this last one, I saved this one for last because just based on the outside, I think this is going to be the best deal getting dark out here. It's interesting because I've been in the gardening world 
for years now. I've been shopping for heirloom seeds for years now, growing gardens and getting a lot of seeds sent to me from, you know, different people from all over the place. And this company was new to me. I found them searching for survival seeds and uh, reading through their information i was very intrigued they do sustainable farming practices they grow a lot of their seeds on their own farm and they're all grown in the u.s which i thought was really cool and i actually bought more than one pack from them so this was the first pack so you can definitely see of all of them this is the the largest pack um let's see here and it was actually one of the cheaper ones so this was like 30 I think it was $35, but then they had a coupon code. And then I ended up buying these two as well. Um, these were not marketed for survival seeds, as you can see. Marketing is hilarious to me. So we've got uh, the bug out bag of seeds. We've got the caution. And again, we're seeing um, survive, um, non 100% non-GMO, 100% non-hybrid, uh, grows 1,300 pounds of food, easy to grow. So really marketing towards people are looking for that. And then here we have these packages of seeds, which obviously they're sourced from the same people. Uh, this is an instant garden pack, 15 beginner varieties. And here is Heirloom Seed Granny's Garden Collection. This is also 15 varieties. And these were only... These were like 15 bucks each and I ended up adding those because I could hit the free shipping threshold and I thought, well, I'll have those and I can give them as gifts. So here's the bug out bag, the survival seed pack, about $35 plus then the coupon code. It says it has um, 22,000 seeds. So already on the outside, this one is gonna have the most and it costs less. Mylar bag, has the resealable top. It does say on the back, store in a cool, dry place, five to seven year longevity. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Now it said there was a guide. Look through here. Oh, here it is, okay. So this is one thing, I saw this on the outside and I thought this was cool veggie planting guide and this has a little booklet in it that has a good deal of information okay this is cool i like this i can appreciate this not only does it give you some information about how to grow each variety it tells you when it's ready to harvest as well as how to save the seed which that I really appreciate as far as teaching someone who may not have a lot of garden experience and equipping them to grow the stuff that they got, whether you're buying these seeds to grow in a survival situation or just because you want to grow a garden and get a good deal on seeds. This company is going to get a lot of orders. They're going to be like, what happened? <laughs> I don't know who I am. <laughs> so... Okay, I really appreciate the information that's in this book. It's colorful, it gives you a picture of what each thing looks like fully done. It tells you the growing needs, how to sow it, how to grow it, when to harvest it, and how to save the seeds. Um, it talks to you, okay, melons will only cross within their species. This is really neat. And then on the back, there's like a chart to tell you like the temperature necessary. Well done sustainable seed company. Okay, now let's look at the packages. Now we'll say these packages are paper. Um, the others are in plastic bags, which is gonna help them last longer outside of this. Now it's in the Mylar bag, so it doesn't really make a difference for storage purposes, but once they're out, having them in paper bags makes them a little more susceptible to getting wet and stuff. So we've got um, eight row golden bantam corn. These are full packs, that's really nice. Sugar Baby Watermelon, Black Seeded Simpson Lettuce. See, that is a full pack of lettuce right there. That's really cool. Old Fashioned Mustard. That's something we haven't seen yet in any of these. Charleston Wakefield Cabbage, Utah Celery, Bloomsdale Spinach. Oh, I'm not separating these out by temperature like I did the others. The other thing that's kind of cool here is the back of these also has some information as far as when to sow them, when to start them. So that's cool. Copenhagen Market Cabbage, Cayenne Long Red Thin Pepper, Scarlet Nance Carrots, Sugar, Small Sugar Pumpkin, 
Waltham 29 broccoli, green sprouting broccoli, straight eight cucumber. Um, another thing that's kind of neat that I'm seeing on these seeds is I'm pretty sure most of their seeds are organic. That's not completely necessary, especially for the sake of sustainability. Um, a lot of times when you buy seeds from companies that are not organically grown, that doesn't change the fact you can grow them organically and have organic food. But if you are a certified organic grower, you do have to source organic seed. So uh, dinosaur kale, a big hefty pack of that. That's really good. That's a good food to have. Um, you know, cabbages and kales are just really nutrient dense. They grow really fast and they're very forgiving of, of poor uh, growing conditions. Crookneck squash, green arrow peas, tender sweet carrots, Hale's Best Melon, Garden Thyme. So that's kind of cool. This is the first one that's had any herbs in it. Uh, Ruby Red Swiss Chard, California Wonder Bell Pepper, Cherry Bell Radish. Here we've got like a whole five gram pack. So that's really nice on a fast growing food for a survival situation. Uh, romaine Lettuce big heavy pack. Roma tomatoes, spaghetti squash, dark red beet, black beauty zucchini, long purple eggplant, basil, Italian large leaf basil, again another herb that's nice. Summer bib lettuce, basil's not cold. Uh, red Russian kale, oh it's my first one to see red Russian kale, it's one of my favorite kales. Um, Tokyo long white bunch of onions and a uh, shagoin turnip. Okay, this is hands down to me the best collection. As far as the money that you're spending, you're getting a lot of seeds here. This would be a great collection just to grow a regular garden, not trying to save these seeds long term. Just buy them and you've got a pretty ready made garden. I really like this. Just being on my end of things, and this year, the number of people that have come to our channel for the first time because they were like, I need to feel better about my food security. I need to learn how to garden. People who are coming with very little information, growing their first garden this year, running into failure, needing information. This is so important. Just a little booklet like this that has such comprehensive information is very, very valuable. And I really appreciate the fact that they put that in. Uh, the other thing that I will say for this is having such a large variety here is really nice. I feel like there has been thought put into uh, the varieties that are in here to, to give people, I feel like the varieties that are in here would really give people, you know, an opportunity to grow a lot of things. Some of them are gonna be really fast producing, like for instance, there's a heading broccoli, but there's also a sprouting broccoli. Like a sprouting broccoli, you're gonna harvest a little bit sooner having the quick growing things like the kales and the lettuces, but then also having a lot of things like squashes, um, pumpkins, I think that that's really good. And I appreciate the addition of the herbs in here. Overall, this kit was definitely the best price for how many seeds you got. I'm just gonna read to you on the outside because I'm gonna give these as some gifts. Um, basil, beet, carrot, cucumber, kale, lettuce, melon, onion, pea, pepper, squash, tomato, watermelon. So I don't know what varieties those are, but I would assume that they're probably the same as these others. Okay, it's the exact same. These are both the same. Now I don't know if they have the same varieties. The granny's garden does also have the growing guide in it. I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. Obviously different packaging to appeal to different people, but selling a very similar product. Now, I just wanted to share the love because I don't need all of these seeds, but I thought it would be awesome to be able to share one of these seed collections with you. So if you guys would like to enter, we are gonna put our uh, email list down below and just sign up for our mailing list and we will pick one winner off of that list to receive one of these seed collections. Uh, this is not affiliated whatsoever with YouTube. We just wanna kinda share as a thank you to our viewers. Uh, we're closing in on 400,000 subscribers, which is an incredible honor to us. So I will leave this open internationally. If you wanna sign up um, internationally, just go ahead and sign up for the email list as well. If you live somewhere that will not receive 
seeds that won't let you receive seeds um, you can go ahead and sign up and when I if you are chosen when I email you please just let me know and we will get you a uh, cash cash prize in order to buy seeds and we'll pick a second winner for these that way we don't send seeds to a country that won't let them pass customs we, it would be a shame to have them thrown away but I want everybody to be able to participate <laughs> well we've officially stayed out in the greenhouse until after which I actually do fairly regularly whenever I have plants growing out here. Don't do it often when there are no plants growing. Overall, I feel pretty good about all of these seed collections. I do feel like some of them are better value than the other, but they're all um, open pollinated seeds that are grown in the United States, which I feel, I feel good about all of that. I think that even the collection that was not the best value is still not super expensive for seeds. But I think whenever you've got the other options, I would say that this one is hands down the best value. But even these two little collections that have the little bags of seeds, I would say are still a really, you know, a decent way to get into a full garden's worth of seeds at a, at a pretty entry level price. I think one benefit of buying seeds like this, if you are overwhelmed, uh, whenever you go on to go seed shopping, if you're one of those people that I love looking through the catalogs and trying lots of different things, but it is easy to get carried away. And if you're overwhelmed with options and you're just trying to buy seeds for your garden for the year, doing something like this might be a good option. And if you are looking for a collection of seeds to be able to stick in the freezer and keep for many years, definitely uh, any of these would work because they're definitely packaged to be geared for that. In conclusion for this video, talking about the idea of possibly needing survival seeds. I always share the message not to do things like buying seeds or preparing for the possible need of them out of a place of fear. Fear will make you make very, very poor decisions, but I do think that it is wisdom to be prepared. Investing you know, at a price point of around $30 to put enough seeds in your storage to be able to grow a garden full of food. I just think that that's a wise thing to do. Just having those on hand is definitely a wise thing to do. If you are in a place where you're feeling like I need to do this, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the urge to have a preparation like this made. We can make all kinds of preparations um, by buying things and storing things but if we don't have the knowledge to go with those things, they're not going to be nearly as valuable to us. So I cannot encourage you enough, if you are feeling the impulse to buy emergency seeds, uh, spend the time and invest the time into learning what to do with those. I will put links to this stuff down below uh, where I found it. If you have purchased seeds in, of this sort, some sort of like a uh, kid or collection or something like that and you want to share about it, I open up the comment section for you to do that to share with other people. If you've got any tips on how you store your seeds, I love how the comment section in videos like this just becomes a wealth of knowledge. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and for giving me an excuse to make a video that includes buying lots of seeds and opening them up, up, up on camera. Uh, Y'all know that's definitely fun for me. <laughs> I bless you guys. Until next time.